Hello everybody, welcome back to my educational blog ADC English Literature. I am Ardhan Dude. Today we are going to discuss most pertinent question on tragedy. Why does tragedy give us pleasure? We are going to analyze the Aristotelian poetics and the very basic points that Aristotle has discussed in his poetics regarding pleasure. But one question don't take the arguments as blind lens because there are many reasons by which we can conclude the other way so your judgment should not be conclusive and final one rather it should be a continued one so that you can further your studies on literature particularly on tragedy In Poetics, Aristotle gives us the definition of tragedy. A tragedy then, he says, is an imitation of an action that is serious and also as having certain magnitudes, complete in itself, in language, with pleasure, accessories in kind brought in separately in the parts of his works in a dramatic knot in a narrative form which includes arousing pity and fear where with to accomplish its catharsis of such emotions. So it is obvious from the above definition that tragedy concerns action. As you all know that uh, in poetics Aristotle has defined the plot or some total of action as the soul of it but not with the ordinary actions of man you know it concerns those actions which are serious and also as having certain magnitudes complete in itself so in this context uh, aristotle defines that or he refers to another precondition of tragedy by saying that tragedy must evoke an emotion of pity and fear but the pity and fear the emotion for whom it is for the mind of the spectators so audience also come in into the discussion of tragedy because audience are the prime factor of uh, watching a drama so why should audience throng in front of theater hall to watch a uh, dramatic series that is tragedy. Aristotle simply says that the emotions of pity and fear must undergo a process of catharsis, you know. Catharsis, the very word has its meaning purification or purgation. Bringing back a psychological balance or mental equilibrium of the spectators. It is simplest meaning that it keeps a balance. So to watch a tragedy is a sort of psychological medicine or medication rather. This medication is for to restore the balance and health of the mind of the spectators. Going to the theater and watching the accents purifies the very desire of very spectators by filtering them. We get lessons from tragic downfall and the tragic flaw that we entertain in our heart get its treatments. We drop tears, but we drop tears for our paid box. We pay money to drop tears, but for why? So many of the Macbeth, so many of the Hamlet, so many of the Dr. Foxtas that we are living with in our society. Uh, or with whom we are living in our subconscious must die with the death of the tragic hero on stage. That is the very principle for which it is written. It is one of that reason that why we get pleasure from watching the tragedy. That we are explaining from Dr. RJD's pertinent question in his famous book, An Introduction of English Literature to the Foreign Students 
why do we get pleasure and satisfaction from seeing in the theater things that we should certainly not enjoy in reality here uh, from quoting from aristotle's view uh, and rjd's explains uh, I, I i recommend you to read that book that is very handy for young readers aristotle gives the answer that the certain emotion especially the emotion of pity and fear do not get used and up in civilized life but tragedy provides us an opportunity to exercise those emotions by presenting a harrowing spectacle of the suffering of the hero on stage so the entire process is like a homeopathic treatment which involves a process of elimination through excitation as it is explained before so our foul emotions is being excited and out of that excitement the foul emotions are purgated so going to the theater hall if we are heavy coming out of the theater we are much eased There is however another reason for more primitive point of view which helps to explain why we are getting pleasure from watching the suffering of others on stage in tragedy. The reason is the democratic one. The chief characters in Greek tragedies are always the men and women of high status, of towering personalities like kings princes great warriors noble men and there is seldom any place of ordinary people like us in the greek tragedy that is exactly true in the tragedies of shakespeare and other european dramatists as well in fact uh, the great idea of the tragedy as a moral story is to show the falseness of human power and wealth and that is the very old idea old means primitive idea that idea is prolonged one and it must be admitted that many of us who is humble meek get a certain feeling of pleasure of course from seeing those who are clever and successful in their in way of life brought down to our own level and it is a kind of a democratic feeling that i am talking about that democratic feeling in a civic society is perhaps a teaching one that whatever you may be whatever the social status yours may be if you do some moral flaw or if you have some error of judgment you should meet the same catastrophe as we do Perhaps this is why so many of the tragedies have been written on the subject of Julius Caesar and the last day of Hitler and the fall of Mussolini and so on. These are the above reasons by which we can say that pleasure, the aesthetic pleasure of course, uh, has its origin out of tragedy and every reader get its share because he is going on the theater hall or watching on stage the very performances of the tragic characters and those characters are not lifelike but they are the forefront of social status and their downfall is teaching us and also giving a moral solace that that I am pleased to watch this drama because whatever foul emotions I am entertaining, I am not exercising it in reality. If I do so, I will meet the same fate. For example, if I am over ambitious and watching the Macbeth, I learn myself or get a lesson from it that if I exercise that over ambition and take an illicit way to get pleasure out of it and take a uh, opportunity out of it i might have a foul mind or drag myself into that criminality 
like that of Macbeth. If I uh, delay some action, if inaction creeps me, then I will meet the same tragedy as like that of Hamlet. If I have the same fallacy like that of infinite knowledge, and if I take the path of sarcasm or uh, magic way, then I might have met the same fate as that of Nobel learned Dr. Foster. So these kind of lessons are there and out of that lessons we are pleased to watch. But I am not like Prince Hamlet, I am not like Prince Macbeth, I am not like that of King Lear. The list can be enlarged further. But notably, one point is very interesting that even though there are tragedies where main characters are like King Lee, Queen Lee, Nobleman, there are so many of the tragedies, I mean the social I mean the social tragedies where uh, simple persons, simple people's life has been oriented, has been enacted with the quality of a tragic feature, with the quality of a tragic grandeur. And why this kind of uh, person has been given the status of a tragic hero or heroine is a matter of interest. Even though they are not noblemen, for example, Riders to the Sea, where we find Moria, the character, very peasant woman and the fisher woman who is losing one after another all of the households male households of his of her family into the fall and iron sea the moria is um, more uh, even though she is not a queen or a more uh, higher strata of person but her feelings are universal one and she is the universal mother figure so that universality if he touches the if the character touches that universal essence the universality the humanity then it also adds to our mind and would start dropping tears even some of the tragedies are melodramatic some of the tragedies are forced one only pathetic but Aristotelian view of a perfect tragedy which can give its totality of the pleasure after dropping tears is only possible by this ethics that he has given through in the parameters of poetics. Uh, so I think you have gone through this lecture minutely and have understood a bit about, about the ethics of dropping tears and even though you drop tears, you are pleased to drop tears. So like, share, comment and obviously subscribe to my channel so that you can get this kind of post and further lessons on different topics. Bye bye.